Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tve.com y por menos de un euro al día. Can he drive? No, he can't. Can he speak Chinese? No, he can't. Can he climb Mount Everest? El Monte Everest. Mount Everest? No, he can't. Uh, can he swim across the Atlantic? No, he can't. Can he lift a thousand kilos? No, he can't. Can he, 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 can he? Me como la H de he. No recomiendo que lo hagáis vosotros, pero los nativos nos comemos la H en he con Kenny. En muchos más casos. Kenny, can he? Puede cantar como Plaza Domingo. Can he sing like Plaza Domingo? Can he? Lo decís así, pero vais a oír Kenny. Kenny. Can he sing like Plaza Domingo? Can he drive a car? No, he can't. Kenny, Kenny. Ahora sí, se trata de ella. Can she? Can she? Can she? La SH es fuerte. Se oye, can she? Pero cuando es él, Kenny. Can he drive? No, he can't. Can he fly? No, he can't. Bienvenidos a la clase 123. Ahora vamos a ver la frase Can he drive? No, he can't. Y nos centraremos ahora en la primera parte de la frase Can he? Ya hemos visto en clases anteriores Can I o I can. Y ahora llegamos a la tercera persona del singular. Can he? Can to he o can he to jamás. Can he? Can he drive? Por ejemplo, can he sing? Tres preguntas más, rápido. Can he dance? Can he speak English? Can he write well? Puede escribir bien. Muy bien. Can he? Can he? Y no decimos can he drives con la S, porque can es el verbo auxiliar que va al principio y está conjugado y no cambia. Siempre es can. Can I? Can you? Can he? Can she? Can we? Can they? Can he drive? Entonces, ¿cómo sería? Él puede bailar. Muy bien. Can he dance? O sea, I mean, que nos vamos a esquiar. Ah, qué guay, Funti. ¿Se puede venir mi novio, Javi? Can he? Can he come? Please, can he? Sí, espera. ¿Has visto cómo le he dicho? ¿Puede venir? Can he come? ¿Mm? Can he? ¿Lo puedes decir tú? Can you? Very good. Can he come? Can he come, please? Okay, thank you. Que si sabe esquiar, can he ski? Ay, pues sí, claro. ¿Cómo voy a salir yo con alguien que no sepa esquiar? Can he ski? Of course he can. Bueno, espera. La verdad es que no tengo ni idea de si puede esquiar. Can he ski? Can he ski? Bueno, sí, sí. Pero, ¿y tu novio? Can your boyfriend ski? Can he ski? Huh? Ay, si va a ser el único. Ah, vale, vale. Ok. Ok, bueno. Well, thank you. See you on Saturday then. Bye. Mm. O sea, súper guay. Nos vamos a esquiar. Pero es que no sé si Javi sabe esquiar, la verdad. ¿Quién es esquí? No sé. ¿Quién es? ¿Cómo decimos entonces? ¿Puede conducir? ¿Has dicho, can he to drive? ¡Ah! Espero que no. ¿Has dicho, he can drive? Tampoco es, can he drive? Con una V vibrada. Drive. Drive. Si dijiste, can he to drive? Lo siento, pero has suspendido. La palabra del día. You have failed. To fail. El verbo suspender o fracasar. Fail. Fail. Fa no, fail. Fail. Muy bien. Pregúntame si puedo conducir. Jimena. Can you drive? No. I can't drive. Y pregúntame por qué. Jimena, why can't you drive? Because I failed my driving test. Suspendí el examen de conducir. I failed my driving test. La palabra del día, to fail. Entonces, drive con una V fuerte, drive. Drive 
Muy bien, drive. <gasps> Only one more hour and then I'm going away with my neighbor and her son. Yeah, I'm really excited. But hmm, can he drive? ¿Puede él conducir? Solo tiene 16 años. He's only 16 years old. Can he drive? I don't know, it's a good question. Ask me if he can drive. Eso es, can he drive? Pues no lo sé. Voy a llamarla, voy a preguntarla. A ver. Hmm, Angela, can your son drive? I said, can he drive your son? Can he drive? Porque vamos en su coche. Can he drive? He can't drive. Who is going to drive? I'm going to drive. I can't drive. I can't drive. I can clean, but I can't drive. visto en otras clases cómo de importantes son las respuestas cortas. No podemos solo decir no. Podemos decir, tenemos que decir no, he can't. En este caso, no, he can't. No, he cannot, contraído. No, he can't. No, no puede. No, he can't. En vez de no, he can't drive, quedamos con el verbo auxiliar. No, he can't, en negativo. Si yo fuese del norte de Inglaterra o de América, diría can't. Can't, pero como soy de Londres, digo can't, con una A larga, can't. Can, can't, en negativo, sí, cuesta decirlo, can't. Entonces, más ejemplos con este can't. Can he swim? No, he can't. ¿Puede nadar? No, no puede. Can she speak Japanese? No, she can't. ¿Puede hablar japonés? No, no puede. No, she can't. Y la frase entera. Can he drive? ¿Puede conducir? No, he can't. Más larga, can't. Eso es. Hi, it's Mr. Strong. And say hello to these. Mwah. Mwah. Well, I have a little problem. Tengo un problemilla. A little problem. And well, Rick, I have a friend named Rick. Un amigo que se llama Rick. And... I'm afraid, Demo, I'm afraid that Michelle likes him. Yeah, but I like Michelle. So this is horrible. I can't take this. No puedo con esto. But you know what? Sabes que? He's not talented. Él no tiene talento. Like me. No. I can do magic tricks. Yeah, look. <laughs> I can do magic tricks. Can he do magic tricks? Can Rick do magic tricks? No, he can't. He can't do magic tricks. <laughs> I can. I can do magic tricks. He can't. Now, fijaos en la pronunciación de esto, porque claro, hay una T que distingue la afirmación con la negación. I can and I can't. Pero también, si te das cuenta, cuando lo dije, dije I can sin ningún acento. I can do it. I can. No hay A. Ah. Y la negativa, I can't, acento en la A. So, I can do magic tricks. He can't do magic tricks. It took place in 1992, outside the post office. It took place, in English, las cosas no tienen lugar, toman lugar, tomó lugar, tuvo lugar. It took place, it took place. It took place, it took place, it took place. La T de it, con la T de took, se enlazan. It took place, it took place. ¿Cuándo? When? In 1992. Where? Just outside a post office. Justo en las afueras, las calles circundantes de un, una oficina de correos. A post office. It took place in 1992. It didn't take place, it didn't take place in 1993. It took place in 1992 outside a post office. It didn't take place in the post office. It didn't take place in the post office. It took place outside the post office. And it took place in 1992. It didn't take place in 1993. So, para recapitular, it took place in 1992 outside a post office.
Hola, empezamos con la clase 123 y la frase de hoy es It took place in 1992 outside a post office. Tuvo lugar en 1992 fuera de una oficina de correos. Vamos al primer punto. It took place. Tuvo lugar. Aquí necesitamos el it. Necesitamos el sujeto. It took place. It took place. O oh, it happened. Siempre, siempre, siempre. Ahora tenemos la expresión to take place con el verbo to take, que también es irregular. Every day it takes place. Yesterday it took place. Cuidado que no digamos took place. No, no suena bien. It took place. Took place. Veamos unos ejemplos. The meeting took place yesterday. Did their wedding take place in a cathedral? Yes, their wedding took place in a cathedral. Tuvo lugar en una catedral. And these classes take place in your TV. Muy bien, nos vemos en un minutito. Hi, it's Frank. And I'm afraid we've got another situation on our hands. Yeah, there's been a serious crime committed. That's right, a serious crime crime. Yeah. Oh, when did it take place? It took place yesterday. That's when it took place. Oh, what time did it take place, huh? It took place around five o'clock. No, sorry. It took place around 4.30, because I remember I was on a coffee break when it took place. Now, fijaos, no dicho took place. Dicho took, uh, no u. Uh, took, it took place, it took place. Hay otras palabras que pronunciáis mal también que son muy parecidas. Look, no Luke. Luke, yeah, it's a, it's a person's name. Look at the book. Di esta, take a look at the book. No look at the book. Uh, uh, take a look at the book. So when did it take place? It took place yesterday. What time did it take place? It took place around 4.30. Will it ever take place again? Not on my watch, it won't. No, no, no. Hola. Vayamos con el segundo punto. In 1992. En 1992. Ahora, en inglés usamos la preposición in cuando nos referimos a los años. In 1992, in 1993, in 1994. Y también usamos en con los meses. Por ejemplo, I was born in 1985. And I was born in January. Pero usamos on con los días. I was born on a Wednesday. Ahora, cuidado con la pronunciación de 1992. Asegúrate de marcar bien el teen. 1992. Porque si dices 1992, estás diciendo que es el año 9092, y eso está en el futuro. Así que asegúrate de decir 1992. Ahora, vamos con algunos ejemplos. The Olympics took place in Barcelona in 1992. Bill Clinton was elected president of the United States in 1992. What else took place in 1992? Muy bien, nos vemos en un minutito. You know, the other day I was thinking, and I thought so many good things happened in 1992. Uh-huh, 1992 was like the perfect year. <laughs> anyway, so Una Carey, my favorite model, was born in 1992. Uh-huh. Victor Sanabria, my favourite singer, was born in 1992. And my favourite actor, John Hicks, was also born in 1992. Can you believe it? What a great year! Eso, decimos 1992. We separate it into two blocks. 1992. Repeat with me. 1992. Perfect. And remember, we say in 1992. You're not on, you're not when, in. In 1992. Perfect. Hmm, what else happened in 1992? 
Euro Disney in France was built. Hmm. Hmm. The Maastricht Treaty starting the EU was signed in 1992. Huh. The Olympic Games in Barcelona started in 1992. It's amazing. And oh my god! This shopping centre was built in 1992. Well, that was a great year. <laughs> Muy bien, ahora con la tercera parte. Outside a post office. Fuera de una oficina de correos. Y aquí énfasis en outside, outside. Que se dice outside a place. Fuera de un lugar. Pero no decimos outside of a post office, nunca. No ponemos una preposición ahí. Decimos outside a post office. Por ejemplo, I saw him outside the window. I found the wallet outside the house. Encontré la billetera fuera de la casa. Ahora, la pronunciación outside no es outside, sino out. Outside. Repite conmigo. Outside. Muy bien. Ahora, ¿cómo se dice en inglés? Tuvo lugar en 1993 fuera del centro comercial. A ver. It took place in 1993 outside the mall. Ahora. Otro ejemplo. Did it take place in 1982 outside the city hall? Y aquí tenemos la palabra del día, city hall o town hall, que es el ayuntamiento. Pero it took place in 1992 outside a post office. Muy bien, nos vemos en la siguiente clase. Maha, as you can see, I'm painting. Today I'm painting outside the shop. Of course, I'm painting outside the shop because where I paint has a great effect on my inspiration. I'm painting outside the shop. That's right, outside the shop. No hace falta decir outside of the shop. No, I'm painting outside the shop. Yesterday, I painted outside the post office. Sometimes I paint outside the supermarket. I paint in a lot of places, but I use different locations to get inspiration. It helps me stay inspired, you know. Today I'm painting outside the shop. Maybe tomorrow I'll paint outside the hospital. Maybe I'll paint just outside the park. Who knows? But today I'm painting outside the shop. In fact, I think I might call this painting, this masterpiece, Outside the Shop. Don't you think that's a great name? That's right. Outside the shop. It's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame they fell out with each other. <laughs> They're regretting it now, eh? Ya lo sé. Yo lo sé yo, eh? They're regretting it now. It's a shame, it's a shame, it's a shame. It's a pity. It's too bad. It's too bad. Que lastima. Ay, que lastima. It's too bad. It's a pity. It's a shame. It's a shame they fell out with each other. Se rompieron. To have a falling out. It's a pity they fell out. Como caer fuera de algo. It's a pity. It's a shame. It's too bad they fell out with each other. They're regretting it now. Ya lo están arrepintiendo. Que se unen, que se vuelven. Que se vuelvan. Yeah, come back together. I don't understand why they're regretting it. They should come back together. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a pity. It's too bad. It's a shame they fell out with each other, and now they are regretting it. Well, easy solution. They should come back together. It's a shame they fell out with each other, <laughs> and they're regretting it now. Yeah. Yeah. I guess he... Okay, lo mismo, eh? It's a shame. It's a shame they fell out with each other. It's a shame they fell out with each other. And they're regretting it now. It's a shame, it's a shame, it's a shame. It's too bad, it's a pity. Es una lastima. A que si. Que hayan roto, eh? It's a shame they fell. Como caer. They fell out with each other. Una forma de decir romper. Una relación. Afectiva. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's, it is, contracción. It's a shame. Shame significa vergüenza. Pero también en este caso, it's a shame es, es una lástima. Es una pena. Ah, no. No tiene nada que ver con vergüenza aquí. Shame has two clear, di clearly different meanings. Ah, it's a shame. It's a pity.
It's too bad. Yo digo siempre it's too bad. Yo creo que es casi universal too bad. Pero it's a shame también. Conviene saberlo bien. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame they fell out with each other. Y ya lo están. Ya se lo. Ya se arrepientan. They are regretting it now. But it's a shame. It's a shame. Oof. We've got a problem. Yeah. A serious problem. Well, the hotel is losing money. Yeah. Last month, we lost a lot of money. Yeah, things are difficult. Yeah, the way things are, it's tough. It's a shame. It is really, really a shame because we never lost money before. And it's a shame. It really is a shame. Cuidado. No same. Shh. Shame. It's a shame. It's a, se junta también. It's a shame. It's a shame. Dilo tú. It's a shame we're losing money. It's a shame that things aren't how they used to be. Como antes eran. It's a shame. Yeah, I know. And it's a shame for Mike, you know. It's really a shame for Mike because Mike really enjoys mixing drinks. He likes mixing drinks, and he likes dealing with the customers. So it's a shame for Mike. Oh, and Margaret? Margaret loves cleaning this hotel. It's a shame for Margaret because she loves cleaning this hotel. Why? Because she knows every little corner of this hotel. She knows this hotel better than her house. And it's a shame. Yes. It's a shame they fell out with each other. They're regretting it now. It's a shame they fell out with each other. They are, there, regretting it. Yes, lamentándolo, arrepintiéndose. They're regretting it now. It's a shame they fell out with each other. To fall is caer. Geronimo, to fall. To fall out, depende, es caer fuera de, de un sitio, but to fall out with is romper, to break up. They say that breaking up is hard to do. Si, sí, una canción antigua. To fall out, it's the same thing. To fall out with another person. I fell out with her. They fell out with each other. And it's a shame they fell out with each other. It's a shame they fell out with each other. They're regretting it now. Okay. Yes, they're regretting it now. And uh, have you ever fallen out with anybody? Is it a shame? Well, in this case, it's a shame they fell out with each other. They are regretting it now. They're regretting it now. Oh, oh do you see this? How did it happen? Well, you know, I have four cats at home. I know, I know, it's unbelievable that a woman as young as myself would have four cats, but I do. Well, anyway, they all fell out with each other. Specifically, Kitty fell out with Tiger. What? You want to know why they fell out with each other? Well, I don't know. They fell out with each other over a mouse or something like that. How am I supposed to know why two cats fell out with each other? Anyway, I put Kitty in my room and I put Tiger in the kitchen with Mr. Catty Pants. And then I sat down for a cup of tea. And then I heard this awful screaming and meowing. So of course, the two of them, Tiger and Mr. Catty Pants, fell out with each other as well. Oh, anyway, in the end, it was so bad that I had to bring Mr. Catty Pants here to the hotel with me. He's always falling out with the other two. Do you want to see him? Oh, all right, hang on a minute. Come here, Mr. Catty Pants. It's a shame they fell out with each other. Yes, it's a shame they fell out with each other. See, but ellos también porque lo están lamentando ya. And they are regretting it now. To regret is lamentar, lamentarse, arrepentirse. Estar apenado por algo que has hecho o que no has hecho. Uh, they regret. They are sorry. I'm sorry. I regret. I regret it. 
is I'm sorry, lo siento, lo lamento. Me arrepiento de ello, lo siento, I'm sorry, I regret it. And it's a shame, es una pena que hayan roto, y ya lo están lamentando. It's a shame they, are, they fell out with each other, and they are regretting it now. They're, they're, contracting the they're, they're regretting it now. All right, word of the day, chairman. <laughs> Hombre de la silla, but it puede ser woman también. A chairman. Chairman is el presidente del consejo. I'm the chairman of the board. Consejo de administración is the board. The chairman. The chairman. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, señor presidente, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Hey, how's it going? Hey, do you know that two girls this weekend turned me down? Yes, two. <laughs> ah, but don't worry. They're regretting it now. Yeah, yeah, they're really regretting it now. What are they doing? Exactly, they're really regretting it now. You see, what happened was, I invited them both out to dinner, and they said yes. I mean, not to go to dinner together, of course, but then they found out, and they fell out with each other, and they turned me down. But after they found out about my other dates this weekend, <laughs> they're both really regretting it now. They are. I know. They've sent me messages. They said, Mike, we're really regretting it now. Please. Oh, it's such a shame. I knew they were going to regret it. <sighs> Neither of them have experienced a date with the mic machine. And they're really regretting it now. In fact, they're still trying to contact me. Mike, can we have a second chance? Come on, one last chance. We're really regretting it. I'll have to think about that. Okay, I'll give them one last chance. I mean, I'm a fair guy, and they are regretting it.